Welcome to the Rental Rookie Podcast, show nine. Welcome to the Rental Rookie Podcast. Get inspired and get perspective from realtors, lenders, contractors, and other investors just like you. Now your host, Emily Duplessis. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rental Rookie Podcast. This is your host, Emily Duplessis, and I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Uh, especially, you know, I know people can listen to this in in the future, but I know right now when I'm recording this, it's right before the holidays. We're just over a little over a week out from um, Christmas, and I know people are busy. We were shopping this weekend. The malls and, you know, places were just absolutely crazy, um, but it's an exciting time of year, and I'm happy that you're tuning in uh, for today's Take 10 show. So in I introduced the Take 10 concept back in show 7 where we talked about three contract dates that you should never leave out. Today I'm coming back with you with another Take 10 show uh, and if you didn't tune into show 7 I'll just give you a quick rundown. The whole idea of a Take 10 segment um, is giving you 10 minutes of education on one concept related to real estate investing. You know, I know we're all busy. I know we're on the go. Um, and sometimes we don't have time to listen to a super long podcast. I know sometimes I don't, you know, some it'll take me three or four days to get through a 40 minute podcast. So the whole concept and, and belief and foundation of the Take 10 is 10 minutes or as close to 10 minutes as I can keep it um, of just straight facts. So I don't want to take up too much more time introducing. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in closing about some things I want to direct your attention to. But today's Take 10 is going to be focused on things that you need to do and, and start gathering and preparing for tax season, right? We're coming up on the end of the year, you know, as we get through the holidays and New Year's and we start in, you know, with all of our resolutions into the new year. We have to start thinking about taxes. And I think it's important that if you are, you know, this is good for somebody who already is investing. Maybe you've already, you've just bought your first property and you're not really sure what you need to be keeping track of or gathering. Maybe you've been investing for a little while and you just need a refresher. Or maybe you're a rookie and you have no idea, right? And so today's Take 10 is all about things that you need to make sure that you're keeping track of. So I'm going to go over, let's see, two, four, six, eight different things that you should start gathering and putting together um, for whenever you are doing your taxes, whether you're you know, give, getting a CPA to do them or you're doing them yourselves. These are things that you need to start looking for. So the first one that you need is a 1098. All right. So the whole idea of a 1098 is it's going to be an overview of the interest that you paid in your mortgage payments throughout the year. So every month you make your mortgage payment, your PITI, um, principal interest, taxes and insurance, and your interest is tax deductible that you pay on a property. So your 1098 is going to be a document or a statement that should be supplied by the bank that services your loan. Okay, so that's who should be sending it to you. So, you know, sometimes I know the in the secondary market of lending, right? You may be, you know, when you closed on your property, maybe, you know, uh, SunTrust was the one who was giving you your loan when you closed. And then you get a letter six months later, eight months later, 10 months later, and it's saying, oh, well, Wells Fargo has bought your loan and now Wells Fargo is servicing it, right? So you need to make sure that you're keeping track of and you know who is servicing your loan and that's who you're going to get your 1098 from. So that's definitely something, um, you pay that interest all year long, you wanna definitely make sure that you're able to, to deduct that from your taxes. The next thing, number two, is your real estate tax records. All right, now this record, you may have to do a little bit of digging. Um, You can find it on either your own on the county website, or if you check out your escrow statement, um, you might be able to find it on there. But that's just going to be a statement or a document that's going to show the real estate taxes that you've paid throughout the, throughout the course of the year as well. So, you know, one of the things you're looking for with the 1098 is the interest. The other thing that you're looking for are your tax records and the taxes that you paid. So you definitely want to make sure that you have those two things. The third thing, those of you who invest in townhouses or condos or any other kind of you know housing development that may have a, um, an association, all right, so each month from whatever the association is, you should get some sort of statement from them um, and you know to pay your bills and, and so on and so forth. And so a tip really is to kind of keep track of those throughout the course of the year. Um, 
whether you are using a folder that's you know a mile high with with papers that you're stuffing in there or you have some sort of online tracking system um, you should definitely keep track of those things because at the end of the year when it's time to get all of this together for your CPA or for yourself um, you're gonna want to be able to total up how much you paid in condo or HOA dues because that's going to come into and, and play into the analysis that you're going to run um, when it comes to tax time the fourth thing that you want to pay attention to are management fees. So if you are not managing your properties and you have gone the route of hiring property management, management, kudos to you because you're living probably in all honesty on passive income. So that's fantastic. I'm happy if you did that. Um, a lot of us, including myself, are still holding on to managing our properties ourselves. But if you have paid for property management, you want to make sure that you keep track of the monthly fee that you pay them because that's just another payment and another expense that's going to play into the total analysis, you know, for running your business at the end of the year. You really have, you know, and I say running your business because what you're doing, investing in real estate, really is a business. You know, it's your business and you're going and, you know, you're going to be able to write things off that are related to your business and you need to be able to keep track of that so that you are making the best financial, you know, the best use of your financial resources as possible. You know, if you're able to write things off and, and have deductions, you definitely, definitely want to make sure that you have your ducks in a row when it comes to that. Number five, advertising. If you've done any kind of advertising, paid advertising, I should say. You know, a lot of the advertising that we do is free. You know, Craigslist, Postlet, some of those places. But I know that there are some people out there that advertise and um, and pay for that. You know, I know some people are using Facebook ads to drive traffic to their properties. And so if you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're, you know, keeping a spreadsheet and keeping track of the expenses that you're paying on advertising. Our next one, utilities, all right? So this is number six, utilities. This might not appeal to you if your tenants are paying all of your utilities, but if you as the landlord are paying any of those utilities, um, you wanna make sure that you keep those statements. Those will be totaled up and those will also be included in your overall analysis at the end, all right? So utilities are huge. The rent, all right, I mean, it goes to show that rent is your income every single month and that, you know, you want that eventually down the road to be, you know, counting as income and maybe some for some people replacing your income and, and allowing you to leave your job and, and live a life that you wish to live. Um, but you need to make sure that you're keeping track of all of your rent, rent payments each month. So, you know, if you, if they're sending you checks in the mail and you're, you know, keeping those checks, if you are doing some sort of online system, I know there are a lot of online systems out there that you can use. Um, I'm sure you're able to get a statement from them that shows uh, the rent and, and the monthly rent that's coming in. But what you're going to want for tax purposes is you will need to total up your gross rent. All right. So not the net rent, right? So not the rent, not the income, you know, less your rent, less expenses. You want to total up your gross rent for your analysis and you have to have a record to show that. So you can't just have an, exp an Excel spreadsheet and have, you know, a box in there that says gross income and have a number in there. They're going to want to see some sort of record or tracking system that you have in place for these payments each month. All right. The last thing is the expense list. All right. So this is the record that you create and this keeps tally of all of the things that are related to your business and your expenses. So things like gas, you know, if you're driving around and looking at properties or driving, you know, in our case, um, when we were living where we lived before in Virginia, we drove, you know, 40 minutes if we needed to go out to the properties for anything. And so, you know, that was decent, a decent amount of gas if we had to go out at all. Um, so keeping track of, of gas, keeping track of meals, keeping track of contractor service calls, any kind of lawn maintenance, snow removal, uh, mileage, right? Those are all expenses that you can keep track of and ultimately use to help reduce um, you know, your taxes at the end of the year. And so those are the nine things that I recommend that you start gathering and getting together for tax season. 
Quickly, I'm just going to run down through them again. Your 1098, your real estate tax records, your HOA or condo fees, management fees, advertising, utilities, rent, and expense list. So those are the nine things um, that I recommend you start gathering together. And before I close out here, I have a, another minute or so before my, my 10 minute limit is up. Um, you know, I really recommend getting some sort of process in line, especially if you're just starting out. If this is a, a, a business and you know a venture that you want to grow and scale, you want to make sure that you're putting the right processes in place now, early, so that when you do want to scale and it's time to scale, you're able to do that because you have a system in place. And down the road, we'll, you know, we'll dedicate a whole podcast to talking about systems and what type of systems are out there that people are using. Um, but it's definitely something to start thinking about and start dabbling in, maybe doing a little bit of research um, to find out, you know, what systems are out there, what um, sorts of softwares or apps or things like that that are out there that can help you, you know, start keeping track of these things throughout the year. So you're not scrambling at the end of the year trying to get all of the stuff together. If you have a system in place that allows you to do it throughout the whole entire year, when it comes to tax time, it's no big deal. For you, it's probably just going to be printing out, you know, hitting print on your computer and being able to print out some some records that you've been keeping all year long. So there won't be any headaches. But that'll be something that we'll talk about further down the road. But I hope that you learned something. I'm just coming up on my 10 minutes. I'm really excited that I actually kind of stayed to 10 minutes today. Woohoo, go me. Um, but I want to just say one thing before we go. If you haven't gone to or if you're looking for other shows um, in the show notes, head over to www.rentalrookie.com slash podcast. There you'll find links to all of the show notes for all of the shows. So if you've listened to other shows and you haven't made your way to any of the show notes, you can go there. I will put a link in the show notes for this show, show nine. Um, I have a blog post that uh, gives a lot of this detail from what I just talked about in the podcast today. So I'll put a link to that. That way you can visually see that some of, and you know, as a teacher, I know some people learn Visually, they like to see it. It helps them. So I'll put that there. You'll be able to go and, and check that blog post out. Um, but other than that, I hope that you learned something in these 10 minutes. That's the whole goal of the Take 10 segments. Um, so I hope that you on the go were able to learn one thing about real estate investing. So until next time, happy investing. Thanks for listening to the Rental Rookie Podcast. We love helping people invest in rental properties, so feel free to spread the word about our podcast. Rate us on iTunes, leave us a comment, or share us with your network. Learn more at rentalrookie.com.